And I'm, there's a man who should be recognized in the story called Alan Parisa. And he was uh, a connoisseur of music, of just good taste, of all kinds of other things, substances and, and women and movies. And he lived in LA. And when Cream came to LA, he came and took me to his house, which was in Laurel Canyon, and it was cantilevered over the canyon. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful place. He was a really, he drove a little Porsche. He was a very understated guy. And he said, I've got something that you might like to hear here that's just coming out. It's not out yet, uh, but I thought you'd like it. And he had these Altec Voice of the Theatre speakers suspended from the ceiling at an angle. And he gave me this split and he started to play Big Pink quite loud. And I'm on a couch with the, the band like about three feet away from me, <laughs> full, full flood, you know, and uh, and with this, this stuff called Ice Bag, which was uh, the best Mexican grass that I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And I was transported to uh, another dimension, really, completely. And I was uh, doing gigs with that, you know, maybe the following day or even that night with Cream. And we went on and did I'm So Glad and, uh, you know, Sunshine and all these things. And I just thought, oh, man, what the, f what, what am I doing doing this? And there's <laughs> that. That has already been going on. And, you know, I was at that time not a great fan of Dylan uh, because in the Yardbirds, one of the players was a folk fan and he liked Joan Baez and Dylan and Judy Collins and it was all just too esoteric for me and uh, I like Chicago blues, etc. So I was biased against Dylan. When Dylan came through London with the band, um, I didn't really, get, I didn't see him. But, but when Alan Parisa played me that, and just while we're still talking about him, he introduced me to Delaney and Bonnie. He managed Delaney and Bonnie and wow, okay, they came on the blind faith tour. That's yep. how that happened. So he was—he's a man that ought to be. We ought to talk about him in terms of iconic characters around around the scene in LA. He was the man, and uh, in San Francisco, it was Owsley who made the. The acid, you know, there was all these <laughs> the chief, chief characters. But Robbie, then I said to Alan, could you arrange a meeting? Because I have to meet this guy. Because he, he made it clear that Robbie was the, the sort of chief of that little club, you know, the gang. And, right. Uh, and, and, and sure enough, the next time, or maybe even a month or two later, at Alan's house, there was Robbie. And because and, Alan would know Robbie. Ro Alan knew everybody, you know. And uh, and I said, can I, can we hang out sometime? Where do you live? And he said, oh, we're in Woodstock. So I, 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 can I, can I come up there? And I had permed hair, <laughs> red trousers, and sort of multi multicolored. It was, you know, uh, cream was going through the acid thing. And, yeah. uh, and I showed up there and I, and I met them and, uh, and I got, I got to meet Bob and Bob was, was being a kind of farmer at the time. And it was great. It was great, but it took me away. It took me away from where I was kind of, um, going for second best. I mean, all these years later, I do look back on cream with much more respect and, uh, 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 and gratitude and admiration because we didn't really know what we were doing but we were doing our best and we were from different schools of music music so it was uh, difficult for us to merge but we did but um when Robbie passed I um I went back you know and I revisited I listened to everything and uh and I started to think about well what really happened there? Um, because I, you know, I, lo I looked at band renditions uh, of some of the songs, some of the performances the band did after the band broke up seemed to be far superior to what they were doing 
before he called it a day. And it seemed to me, you know, and I was speculating on what had happened and and looking at some of the gigs when he, he was still there before it broke up. And you could see how they kind of want they, they they got it out of they were out of order. You know, they were doing all kinds of things and and you could see how he could make that decision. But it looked to me like uh after it happened, after the last wars, they got their act together. I mean, some of the, the shows they did for the next five years until they started relapsing again, as it were, mm-hmm. were phenomenal. I mean, it, like they, they got tight and straight. And uh, and I uh, and I imagined that at that point, Robbie could could have regretted it. You know, I, I, I've always I've always wondered whether or not because he went whenever we talked about it, he went on the defensive really quick. Uh, it will automatically to say, you know, it was it was crazy. It was too difficult to, and maybe um, maybe it wouldn't have been possible for him to stay there and have it um, healed. You know, yeah. 